Here we are on location, Russell came off, very nice body. The entry area at the, the Wadi B complex, easily accessible. Just been about an hour's walk in. We come across some pretty incredible little finds. Firstly, this boulder, which must be about 25 meters tall, just standing absolutely upright. This huge boulder here, the size of a three story villa. It's just sort of rock fallen from the cliffs around. And we come into this cave area, so there's a significant overhang, and somebody. It's not a huge effort, you must leave building up this wall here, uh, which then encloses this space, which is three equally sized bays or pens, uh, and this one at the end here. See the brickwork at the back, all interlocking, closing out from the elements to the best of people's ability. So, quite a significant stru structure, very soft. Dust at the bottom. And it looks like these walls have been caked in a sort of plaster, which is unusual for these wadis, just not usually the case, but I'm just trying to make a Airtight seal. I'm thinking possibly there might have been grain stores. Um, just because of the rendering on the outside. It's just made out of mud, I think, basically. But some sort of a limited effectiveness at keeping insects out, maybe. Um, an incredible. Some of those rocks, the rocks placed at the top there have been placed at least 12 feet high, I'd say. It'll take two of me to reach up there. So this is no miniature project. This is a significant build. A small alcove here for a candle or something like that. Here as well. right. There are some hornets and yellow jackets around. I think I'll buzz off out of here. This is a nest I'm disturbing. Incredible, When you step out, it's a small terrace, which is now a bit rubble strewn. Across this round there, there's a small graveyard which we'll have a look at, and you can see up the wadi. Some more man made features. Interesting stuff, not a challenging wadi to get into. Um, fairly flat, only a very minor elevation to get up here, so a nice walk. You can see surrounded on all sides by the cliffs. Blue skies there, and we're in the shade still, which is good. So this is one aspect of our Wadi Walk. This is a Shihu graveyard. You can see there the outline. It's easy to see there the outline of the body and then the rock placed at the head, one placed at the foot. There's another one here. This could have been a lady possibly. So it looks like there's been a rock placed in the centre as well, which is uh, I believe is the case if it's a woman has one centre, but there are these also. Sad to see smaller gravestones. That looks like a child. And then these two here, possibly babies or pets. More likely to be babies though, I think. I don't know. I doubt the mountain men and women buried their pets, to be honest. Um, so who knows? Could have been intertribal conflict or it could have been a rock fall or it could just be a, a site for burials it come naturally difficult very difficult to age the um the graves in any sort of way to be honest it's, uh, it could be 
10 years old or 100 years old or 1,000 years old. Untouched. Those two smaller ones are interesting. I don't think I've ever seen that before in a wadi. Two infant graves, I suppose you would say. And then surrounding, you can see across there in the shaded half of the wadi. Got some dwellings, one of them is quite well maintained. All a feature of the overhang. Here we are at the end of our wadi walk. Again, for about two hours at a very, very leisurely pace, stopping and starting, checking things out. I suppose if you hurried from start to this terminal point, you could maybe do it in an hour, possibly even under an hour, I suppose. It wasn't a hugely challenging walk. What's the most interesting feature is firstly this waterfall. Certainly evidence of calcium deposits. You can see the uh, smooth white surface and also stalactites beginning to form uh, where water has been dripping over an extended period of time. Then, the most interesting thing would probably be this. You think a lemon or an orange tree? It's definitely a citrus tree. There's uh, one fruit there from the previous season. There's no fruit or flowers at the moment, but the leaves have a very lemony scent. And I know that in Fajira they do have a unique sweet lemon, so I wonder if that's what these might be. Anyway, you can see it's fenced to protect it from goats and other northern herbivores. Other than that, there's a water container. Some tools, so it's still an active wadi. Um, and over here, a couple of cans, possibly a site for a beehive or something like that. And maybe people come back and harvest later in the season. I would love to come back to this tree when it has some fruit on it. In fact, I make this pledge now, I will do that. I will film this tree laden with fruit at some point over the next 12 months. Yeah, but that's the wadi we walked up. This is as far as we go. We've had a look. We cannot see any way over that waterfall unless it's hidden ladders or similar, but we don't. There's nothing obvious. I think this is just the end of the wadi. Imagine if water was pouring down from there after a rain flood, we'd be getting washed down that wadi at 100 miles an hour. No question about that. Lovely sunny day, around about 20 degrees in the shade. Uh, super lovely walk. And then this at the end, quite bizarre.